chords right now. Uh, I learned a trick that I'm probably going to do a lot soon. So, yeah. I think I picked up on some of Elvis's techniques. Possibly. So you got your C, G, C chord. And I've always been able to uh, go a bit from playing the, the love story, the old song. Most of young people don't know what it is. Mama taught me this when I was a kid. Um, It's kind of an easy trick that um, I'm going to let you hear it first. And um, I'm going to attempt to sing it kind of so you know what I'm playing. But uh, I'm going to do it regular at first. And then I'm going to do it the way I learned that Elvis did it. Uh, apparently he had a pretty cool technique because the guy was a musical genius. He had you know, he played the piano, played the guitar, played by ear, wrote music. A lot of the pop songs he played, somebody else wrote, but the music that he wrote was some of the best, lyrically, that has ever been written. Uh, so, let's see. Okay, I'm going to do it regular first. Let's see. song, um, I think in the 70s, right before he died, and um, I know it's Unchained Melody, and I know he didn't write it, I know the which McCall brothers did it, but when he did it, it was freaking awesome, and he played the piano, and I think he might have been slightly high, I don't know, because when he was trying to talk to him, he was kind of stuttering, but, and that was when the drug use got really bad. But, uh, dude, when you played it on the piano, it was like, like, uh, you hear it. And you, if you ever look, like, just the words and listen for the piano part, it's like, whoop, like, this dude. So, I don't know that he was on pills that day. It might have been Coke. Who knows, because, I mean, that's what it seems like at first, because when you hear it, there, it sounds like there's so much going on. Like somebody's got four people playing the piano doing scales. And I figured out how to do it. And first, I'm going to let you hear it. And then I'm going to show you how it's done. Um, 
it's so much easier than I thought. And uh, if I'd have known this a long time ago, oh my god. But see, I, I play by ear, so I started like, really listening to it. I figured it out. But um, check this out. next door um that's it so how i did that is actually pretty easy if you know your chords um i'm using my you know starting the scale with my left hand the bass notes and once i, once I get to my right hand i do repeats just like this I mean, I usually use these three fingers here, but I'm just rolling, like really, like, bum, 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 So, but to finish it, of course, I'm using, okay, I'm playing in C, so I've got my right hand on C, E, and G. I mean, E, G, and C. C, E, and G. So, I'll do the scale up. And I'll get my left hand and jump over it. And hit the next C. See, so it's like... Like you would do an accord. Going on the switch. Okay. So, I keep my right hand right there though. And I keep rolling it. That's literally it, like... And it's easier to do, like, G, E, C, G, E, C, G, C rhythms, because you're doing like this, and roll, instead of trying to do roll, you know, just... Like that. So pinky middle thumb. So G E C G E C G E C G E C. You're just rolling that like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So it's you're doing it in triplets basically. Even even if the the tone count is four four or whatever, you can do it in triplets. If you can do it smooth enough, don't do it any faster than you can do your lower notes on the climb because you don't want it to go bum 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 ba da 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 bum 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 da 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 you know you want it steady so if you got a slow left hand on the bass notes then uh, first three on the lower notes.
basically your double. See, that's another way to do it. And it sounds really good. But you gotta, on that move down, you gotta make it smooth without a pause, so you're like... sevenfold when I played a bench sevenfold almost fiction that's all I was doing was rolling them from my pinky to pointer to thumb like that and but I was doing it on the low notes so that was CGC um, that old video had terrible sound quality because I used a cheap crappy phone to do it but um that's how I did it. Um, it's triplets. Again, it's triplets. Same thing as before. So you can do it the same way as this. And do the triplets. C, G, C. And that's how um, the Rev actually played it. triplets because then it's easier to go if it's exact triplets triplet 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 it'll be easier to do in time so
the 70s that's as hard as I'll get out to do. Uh, it's called Falling Leaves, and I can't do the little... Whatever. Anyway, somebody else can play that with me. I don't care. Um, I'm not doing it. Now, at the same time, you're about to see why.
that's how it's done. This is stuff I've learned listening to other people that were better than me and watching YouTube and listening to real musicians. Elvis, one of them. And this, I've picked up this technique that I'm still learning from other people. Um, so when people compliment me for playing or whatever, they're complimenting me from learning from all these other people that are, you know, amazing. And um, that's, that's part of it, you know. If you've got um, the talent, really talent is the ability to learn from others that are more skilled than you. Whether it's uh, driving, playing music, racing, working on cars, whatever. You learned it from somewhere, so. It's not necessarily that you should be, you know, nobody's born just uh, able to play or able to do things, you know, they can't even walk. People are born with the ability to learn certain things better than other people and uh, catch on. So regardless, without the educated people or the people that did the same, and learned and worked and became really skilled at something. Even people with talent would, you know, they would, they would never grasp anything else. So, um, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Um, learn from other people, pick up techniques, um, watch, you know, when people come and play at church, they can play like old school, gospel with like, you know, a rhythm to it. Um, that's where I learned to what play the stuff, like the God, Christian songs that I play and stuff. There's uh, other people that would come over and then I'd be like, there may be somebody up there singing, but I ain't paying them attention. I'm over there watching, um, I'm watching the piano player and learning the techniques and listening and going, dang, I want to play like that. You know, like, that like, reaches into your soul. Like, what, you know, like, a lot of people, they play earthquakes. All right, so a lot of people, they'll, they'll play Amazing Grace or something. And it, you, know, you hear it a lot in Southern Baptist churches, just the white ones, no offense. But this is basically what you get. And it's like... Yeah, that's cool when you're in like fifth grade. And, uh, you're, whatever, but there's no, there's no, like, rhythm, like, it's all choppy. And I guess maybe it started back in the, when the shape note days, when people were reading and, and singing in these old, old, old churches, missionary Baptist churches more, and, uh, Methodists up in the mountains. But it doesn't sound as good because back then they also sang all of the, you know, four or five part harmonies. So it's still, it's deep. But now everybody sings the chorus. One note, maybe two notes singing it, you know. And then this choppy rhythm. The choppy rhythm sounds good when you got five part harmonies. It's not that great when everybody singing literally the melody notes so there's no depth to it there's no depth that's the word so okay so check this out instead you can play the same notes same speed and have so much more to it if you just if you got to do a shot before church before you play the piano Whatever, loosen up a little. Take a Benadryl about an hour before. Who knows? But you gotta loosen up and kind of, you know.
Okay. So, say that ain't your cup of tea. It sounds too, like, poppy sound. Some modern pop. I don't know. Like a, you sound like the black church. Well, they put soul into it. God forbid them put a little rhythm in it. But if that ain't your cup of tea, all right. What about symphonic? We were in symphonic band from sixth grade up until college, literally, every year, every spring. And then band clinics, and uh, I went to all the band clinics. We had to try out usually to get into band clinics, but I was the only keyboard player, so I went, thank God. And uh, I picked up a lot of uh, technique there, mainly musical composure techniques. And um, you could play a symphonic version of church songs and slow it down and really have time to put emphasis on the notes. And that includes you singers and sing harmonies and really, you know, bring it out. The music's deep, the lyrics are deep, and everybody just blasts through it. They got choppy rhythms and one part, two part harmonies and it just kills it. It takes away from it, a lot away from it. These people wrote the entire sheet music for these songs and you're really missing out on the depth of the meaning by just blazing through it. And I mean, even if you play it right, without the words, it'll even reach into your soul because it'll talk to you. Now imagine playing the music right and the words and the four or five part harmonies, how it would sound and the effect that it has. So, I'm about to show you what I mean. This is one of my renditions that I played at my granddad's funeral. And um, I did it at church once my family happened to not be at church that day, which is kind of rare, but I think they were sick. But um, at my aunt's funeral and my granddad's funeral, my family didn't get to hear me because they came, they got ushered in after I got through playing. And um, they haven't heard this. They surely haven't heard it in a music studio.